At one time, trails carried many travelers to various locations. The travelers on the trails had a diet that normally consists of coffee, bacon, beans, rice, bread, dried meat, dried fruit, and milk from cattle. Most families brought around 1,000 pounds of food to last through their journey. Travelers woke before dawn and had little free time and stopped briefly for lunch. Sometimes wagons were too heavy and forced travelers to lighten the load by leaving things on the side of the trails. Travelers ate dinner and went to sleep early to be well rested for the next day. Everyone needed rest because everyone had to walk unless they were old, sick, or physically unable to. Sundays were a day of rest and many wagons didn't travel on this day. There were many trails. Some were the Oregon Trail, the Mormon Trail, the Santa Fe Trail, California Trail, and the Old Spanish Trail. With many of these trails came danger and tragedy. Sometimes the women's skirts got tangled under the wheels of the wagons, pulling them under. Diseases were a big cause of death on the trails, such as smallpox and chloria. Traveling so close together, these diseases formed and spread rapidly throughout the people. Animals often charged at the wagons, causing them to tip. Terrible storms hit, and having no stable shelter, travelers got stuck by lightning. Indians were thought of as threats to those who are traveling until they were found to be really helpful. They traded horses and food with the travelers. Women did laundry on Sundays or any time they had access to clean water. For fun times, travelers sang songs and told stories around the campfires. They celebrated weddings and births of new babies. Children often spent their time doing schoolwork and sometimes writing in their diaries. Every family carried tools with them while traveling, like rifles, axes, and shovels. Many people traveled on trails, and most were glad they did after their journey was finished. Some people left signs or markings at different points of the trail to guide other travelers that would come after them. Trails were a big part of history and a path to new land for thousands. From the Diary of Sarah Marshall, April 19, 1852. I walked 15 miles today in the blazing sun. My feet are covered with blisters. Mama said I should try walking barefoot. Boots are useless. The dust was so thick that Tom wrote words on Henry's forehead with spit. Henry will know a lot of new words by Oregon. A lady in the wagon in front of us counts the graves. Henry helps her. In two days they have counted twelve. I herd the animals and ignore the graves. The sheep keep wandering off and I have to get them. By the end of the day I long for sleep but am too tired to sleep. All around us are sheep, cattle, horses, people, and dust. How I miss my room at home. There is nowhere to be alone. From the Diary of Harriet Marshall, May 13, 1852. All it seems to do is rain. Everything is soaked. Nothing ever dries. Many families have sick ones. We leave them behind and hope they find us. Medicine does not seem to help, but I make William, Tom, Sarah, and Henry take castor oil every day. I had to chase Henry to make him take it. William says we will soon be at Courthouse Rock. We found the grave of my nephew, Liddy's son. We prayed over it and left flowers. I fear losing a child on this journey. From the Diary of William Marshall, April 2, 1852. My brother-in-law, James, wrote me. He says to leave Missouri with a good light wagon, 150 pounds of flour, 60 pounds of bacon, 40 pounds of sugar, 25 pounds of dried fruit, 10 pounds of rice, plenty of pickles and vinegar, coffee and tea, and lots of warm blankets. I had a wagon built with a toolbox, a place for water barrel, and hardwood brakes. The brakes might have to save our lives. He says to buy a spare axle too. There will be little room in the wagon, four feet by ten feet. Tom and I will have to walk or ride. I'll teach Sarah how to drive the wagon. She'll have to walk too, herding the sheep. 
Tomorrow I'll sign us up for the wagon train. I hope we leave in two weeks. The talk about crossing the rivers made me jumpy. I'll try to save some money to take the ferries. In June of 1846, a unique group of travelers traveled on one of the many trails known as the Donner Party. There were many families, some including the Breens, Graves, Reeds, and the Donners. They were traveling with many other people, but George Donner insisted that they take a shortcut. Little did they know, the shortcut only added weeks onto their journey. The Donner Party stopped for repairs. After the axle of their wagon was not able to be fixed, the Donner Party created a small shelter and stayed in it. That night came an unexpected five feet of snow with 60 foot drifts. The Donner Party would be stuck there for a while. For three weeks, the Donner Party's food supply was scarred. With no food and many mouths to feed, the Donner Party had no choice but to turn to cannibalism. They started by eating the family animals and then moved on to humans. Mr. Donner was found skull open and brain removed. From the Diary of Patrick Breen, December 31st, 1846. May we with God's help spend the coming year better than the past, which we purpose to do if Almighty God will deliver us from our present dreadful situations. February 5th, 1847. Peggy, very uneasy for fear, we shall all perish with hunger. We have but little meat left, and only part of three hides has to support Mrs. Reed. She has nothing left but one hide. February 26, 1847. The Donos told the California folks that they commenced to eat the dead people four days ago. If they did not succeed that day or the next in finding their cattle under 10 or 12 feet of snow. Railroads were a big part of history. They carried many travelers to different parts of the country. It took a lot of work to make them, but they were very successful and helpful throughout the country. The railroad offered jobs to many. Some worked on the trains, some worked at stations, and some repaired the tracks. There were engineers who drove the trains, firemen who worked in the locomotives, flagmen who worked on the caboose. They helped the train as the train broke down. They walked the tracks and warned incoming trains and put out red flags to stop the next train immediately. There were some dangerous tracks, such as brakemen. The brakemen climbed on top of the train while the train was moving. They turned the brake wheels, which stopped the train. Other workers were the conductors, who take the train tickets and deal with the passengers. There were baggage men who loaded and unloaded the passengers' bags, guards who dealt with troublemakers, station agents in charge of ticket sales, switchmen who hitched and unhitched couplings between cars. They sometimes worked when the train was moving, and many were killed or injured. Working on railroads was a dangerous, tiring task, but soon railroads were all over the country. They're going to need maybe 5,000 people to build this railroad to Utah. Where are they going to get 5,000 people? The railroad comes up with the, with the idea. It said, the Chinese built the Great Wall, didn't they? Well, let's bring the Chinese in to do this work. And it turns out, Chinese constitute about two-thirds of the entire workforce. Here you had Chinese and other, because they're Irish, uh, track workers as well, so, but the Chinese predominate as a group. As and they are the ones who are doing the most arduous, difficult, and death-defying uh, work. But when the first transcontinental line was completed in 1869, it knitted together America in a way that no comparably large country had been knitted together. Without the large machinery, was a pick and shovel kind of operation and in difficult terrain on mountainsides, hillsides, fording rivers, building bridges, uh, boring tunnels. That was incredibly difficult.